What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin, you're watching No Limits On channel from Russia with Love. Today I'll compare four 4K 32 inch monitors in the range between $400 and $1000 and we'll find the best bang for a buck. So our competitors, ViewSonic VX3211-4K-MHD, LG 32UN650-W, BenQ PD3200U, and finally AOC U32U1. Let's go! <laughs> That's a lot. I've already put out two different videos, the comparison between ViewSonic and LG monitors, kind of a budget version, and the AOC vs BenQ, the pricier version. I'll leave a link to both of those videos down below and they are more in depth. And in today's video we'll discuss the brightness, the functions, the usability, the features and so on. And we'll find out the best monitor for your money among those four. So LG monitor is IPS LED, ViewSonic is VA technology and LED, AOC is IPS and WLED, a more modern technology of LED, and finally BenQ is IPS type LCD. The brightness of those monitors is really different. The ViewSonic has 300 nits, LG 350 nits, BenQ also 350, but it feels like LG is brighter. Look at this graph, it's definitely brighter than the BenQ. And the winner here is AOC with 600 nits. The color out of the box is the best on the priciest one, the AOC, it's closest to my MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Pro. On the second place I would say the ViewSonic, and the BenQ and LG, they have pretty strong green tint, so I suggest calibrating all four monitors, no matter which one you pick, right after you buy this one, so you'll be sure that you have proper colors and calibration. The contrast is 1000 to 1 in LG and we for some reason don't have the dynamic contrast. The ViewSonic has a great contrast ratio of 3000 to 1 and 80 million to 1 in dynamic contrast. AOC has 1300 to 1 and 50 million to 1 dynamic and BenQ has 1000 to 1 and 20 million to 1 dynamic. And now the bit depth, LG is 8-bit plus FRC technology, ViewSonic also 8-bit and FRC, BenQ they say that it's 10-bit but I found some info that it's 8-bit plus FRC as well. And the proper 10-bit monitor is only AOC and they all can project more than a billion colors. The picture quality itself is pretty close to those monitors, I would pick AOC for the first place, then ViewSonic, then LG, and then BenQ. But it's just my own taste. They all are 4K monitors, they look great, the PPI is pretty high, and I would say it's a matter of your personal preference, and if you calibrate those ones, they all look gorgeous. LG is 60 Hz and 5 milliseconds. ViewSonic is from 60 to 75 Hz and 3 milliseconds, a great result here. Then AOC 60 Hz and 5 milliseconds, and BenQ is 60 Hz and 4 milliseconds. Now let's talk about the viewing angles. They all have 178 degrees of horizontal and vertical viewing angles, but to be honest, in the real world, the ViewSonic just loses the contrast and saturation when you look at an angle, so I suggest using this monitor right in front of you and the AOC has also the CR10 rating. The PPI rating is 140 with LG, ViewSonic and AOC and the BenQ is at 137, but you wouldn't notice this difference without being very close to the monitor itself. And now one of the most important and interesting parts, the color gamuts. LG has 95% of DCI-P3 and 95% of CIE 1976, a decent result. ViewSonic has NTSC, which is National TV Standard Committee, at 95%. For instance, sRGB covers only 72% of NTSC. So now you understand the difference in color gamuts. AOC has 100% Adobe RGB, 98% of DCI-P3, which is great, NTSC at 96%, so even bigger than the ViewSonic, and sRGB at 135. The BenQ has 100% of Rec. 709 and 100% of sRGB. Now let's talk HDR. Both LG and ViewSonic they have HDR10 technology. The AOC has Visa certified display HDR600 and BenQ doesn't have any HDR mode. The ports. 
LG has two HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.4 and also the headphones jack. ViewSonic has exactly the same ports, two HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4 and the headphone jack. AOC is a great choice for your dock station because it has HDMI, HDMI 2.0, both in and out headphones, USB Type-C with DisplayPort's alternative mode and charging at 60 watts, DisplayPort 1.2 and 4 USB 3.2. And the BenQ has DisplayPort 1.2, Mini DisplayPort 1.2, two HDMI 2.0, a card reader, SDHC and SDXC MMC, a USB hub with four downstream keys and two upstream keys, a KVM switch, four using two different computers and sets of keyboards and mice, and the headphones jack. Now let's talk about the power bricks. LG has an external power brick which is built into the socket, kind of. How do you call it? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below. And it's a pretty compact power brick. ViewSonic has built in. AOC has an external power brick, but it's not that big and it's not really bigger than the LG's, a little bit. And the BenQ has the built-in power brick. The built-in power brick is both good and bad, so if your monitor is broken, I mean the power is broken, you have to bring the whole monitor to the service room. Or if you have an external power brick, you simply disconnect it from your monitors, you leave the monitor at home and you simply bring the power brick to the service. And now let's talk about the cables in the kit. With the LG monitor, you get a display port cable and the HDMI 2.0 cable. With ViewSonic, only the HDMI 2.0. With AOC, you get display port cable, HDMI 2.0 cable and the USB Type-C cable. With BenQ, you get the display port, the mini display port and the HDMI cable. And now let's talk about the built-in speakers, first the specs and then the real sound comparison test. LG has two 5 watt speakers and I would rate those as 6 out of 10. The ViewSonic has two 2.5 watt speakers and they sound really bad, like 2 out of 10. The AOC has two 2 watt speakers and I would rate those as 5 out of 10. They are not that loud, but the sound is not that eerie as in BenQ's for instance and the BenQ has two 5 watt speakers and it has like 4 out of 10 in my rating, sounds really bad <laughs> to be honest. So you can listen by yourself all of the tests and comparisons and comparing to MacBook Pro 16 inch beautiful beautiful sounding speakers, those monitors are not suggested by me to even listen to some music or a voice message. So just okay, they do have it and we'll forget about those forever. They all feature the Visa mount 100 by 100, which is great. And the LG has an OK stand. It has 12 centimeters of height adjustment, and you can tilt it from minus 5 degrees to 15 degrees. And you have to manually adjust the whole monitor if you want to move it left or right. The stand of ViewSonic is really stylish, and I do like it, but it doesn't have any adjustments of height, or you cannot simply turn it in any way. Only the angle from minus 5 to 13 degrees. You will definitely want to use the Visa mount with this monitor and mount it to the wall. The AOC has a very stylish and great looking stand, it's pretty wide also, it has 90 degrees rotation for portrait mode, it has 40 degrees of left and right rotation, 
mm of height adjustment and the tilt is from minus 3.5 degrees to 18.5 degrees. Great stand. The BenQ has a huge and pretty fat stand. The monitor can also be rotated to 90 degrees to a portrait mode. It has auto pivot mode as well, which is nice. The height adjustment is 15 centimeters, left and right is 45 degrees and the tilt is from minus 5 to 20 degrees. Now let's talk about the bezels. LG has pretty slim bezels and I like the look of this monitor. The ViewSonic has kind of um, mediocre bezels. They are okay, not too fat, not too thin. The AOC has very slim bezels and looks just gorgeous and outstanding on your desk. And the BenQ's bezels are pretty fat and also they reflect color because the screen itself is kind of inside of those bezels and you can see some reflections of bright objects and overall I don't like the look of this monitor, it looks outdated. The cable management. LG has a plastic holder, pretty standard for all little G monitors, it's okay, better than having nothing. ViewSonic doesn't have any cable management, with AOC we do get three Velcros, which is mm, not really good, but it's better than nothing once again. And BenQ has a special hole in the stand itself, so we can mount the cables through the hole and kind of get the clean look. The menu options and control. The best menu in my opinion is in LG monitor, it's the simplest, the cleanest looking and actually the joystick is uh, the best. It's located underneath the monitor and works pretty good. The ViewSonic is a pain. I hate this system, it's so uncomfortable to use because you don't see what you're pressing and it has a lot of buttons on the back and you accidentally turning off the monitor all the time. So. It's like, I don't know, 1 out of 10. With AOC, the design of the menu is just really bad. I hate the visual aspect about this design, it's just... <laughs> why? The joystick is at the back, it's okay, but sometimes you have some misclicks and overall menu is pretty complicated. The Benki monitor has two options, kind of sensor buttons on the front of the monitor and also the dock station, which is much better, but the whole menu is not user friendly in my opinion and overall look and aesthetics of it are pretty poor. So I would say LG kind of the best in here. And now let's talk about the external design. I do like the design of LG, it has white back and pretty slim and sleek design. I would rate it as 7 out of 10. The ViewSonic is also nice, but I hate those stickers on the front of the monitor. Why do you stick those once again? <laughs> but overall I would say it's like 6 out of 10 probably. The AOC is designed by FA Porsche and it looks amazing. I would give it 9 out of 10 because it looks really good and modern and kinda industrial. And the BenQ is fat, is ugly and uh, the stand is huge and the bezels are thick and uh, nah, I don't like it. 3 out of 10. And some additional features. LG has the connectivity for two PCs which is nice, the SDR to HDR mode the black level stabilizer, free sync, flicker save, dynamic action sync and factory calibration, which I didn't like. The ViewSonic has picture in picture mode, AMD free sync, which is nice, flicker free, blue light filter and eye care. The AOC has flicker free and low blue light. The BenQ has a lot of stuff in it, so it has the luminance sensor, which is nice, the CAD to CAM mode for better graphics, if you work in AutoCAD for instance, the KVM switch for using two computers with one monitor, the dual view mode, the flicker free, low blue light, picture in picture mode and eye protect sensor. And finally the prices, once again ViewSonic is $395. LG is $470, BenQ is $700 and AOC is $1000. So guys, my conclusion, if we don't consider the price, the best 4K 32 inch monitor is definitely the AOC. I'm just in love with this monitor, it's a great addition to your home kit, to your uh, MacBook Pro or any computer basically. It's bright, it has good calibration, it has 10-bit color and all that stuff. So big thumbs up for AOC company. But if we are looking for the best bang for a buck, I would say that I did enjoy the LG monitor more because it costs almost two times less. And if you calibrate it properly, it has pretty decent picture quality, nice design and overall feelings about this monitor are pretty good. It lacks contrast a little bit comparing to ViewSonic for instance, but ViewSonic is just so bad 
in those menu systems and also the brightness is very low and the stand why are you making such stands you have to raise it with i don't know some boxes probably to use it properly and the bank here is kind of eh, and for the money i just don't know why i would suggest this monitor for you to buy it's too bulky too heavy not the best image quality just overall it's kind of not for me so here is my rating aoc is the first place LG is the second place, ViewSonic is the third, and probably Bank is also kind of close, but it costs two times more than the ViewSonic, almost. So I would say the ViewSonic is at the third place and the BenQ at the fourth. If you have a different opinion, please write it down in the comment section below. Let's discuss which one is the best 32 inch 4K monitor and which one do you use also. If you did enjoy the content on my channel, if it was helpful, please smash the like and subscribe buttons as I say in my videos and hit the notifications bell. My name is Oleg Nikitin from Russia with Love, No Limits on channel, and I see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.